the name of Jesus, we continue to give you glory. We continue to give you honor. We continue to adore you. We worship you from the depths of our hearts. You are the only God to be worshipped. This day we worship and we honor you. Your name is so great and your love towards us is so great. Everything about you is so great. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So I invite you to join me. Let's sing this song. Let there be love shed amongst us. Let there be love in our eyes. May now your love sweep this nation. Cause us, O oh Lord, to arise. Give us fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. Let there be love shared amongst us. Let there be love. Let there be love. Hallelujah. Let there be love shared amongst us. Let there be love. continue our lessons we are considering the glorious life in Christ Jesus the glorious life in Christ Jesus today our focus will be love our focus will be love we want to read from 1st John chapter 4 verse 7 to 17 1st John chapter 4 verse 7 to 17 and we are reading from the new international version dear friends let us love one another for love comes from god everyone who loves has been born of god and knows god whoever does not love does not know god because god is love this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. 
No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us. And his love is made complete in us. Now 13, he says, we know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Now, and we know, or we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledged or acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Now verse 17. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. Because in this world, we are like him. If we live in love, if we love one another, if God's love is made manifest in us, we will have confidence in the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. We have lived our lives like Christ in this world. Now, we consider second reading from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14, which is part of our key text last week. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Now, if we go back to previous lesson, as last week's message, we will see that as God's people, we have been called to reflect Christ in our everyday life. It is our duty to exhibit the life of Christ. And this life of Christ, we realize from last week's message, is the fruit of the Spirit. So when we came to faith, we were given the Holy Spirit of God who lives in us. And he brings the life of Christ through our everyday life to bear. So that the world will know who Christ is by the way we live our lives. We mention the fruit of the spirit. And in the reading, we realize that the Bible says, as we exhibit kindness, compassion, and other things, we bind them all together with love, with love. And today, we are being called upon to reflect God. And the Bible says this God is love. So the way we have to reflect God in this Bible passage is living a life of love. Living a life of love. Now, in John's writings, he has revealed God or he reveals God's nature in three expressions. And what we have here in 1 John chapter 4 is the third expression of God's nature. It's the third one. But we want to consider the first two 
and then bring in the third one, which will be the focus of our message. When we read the gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verse 24, he reports what Jesus said about God. He says, God is spirit, meaning that God, as to his essence, is not flesh and blood. God is spirit. And he says his worshippers, in other words, his followers, his children, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So here he's bringing to us one of the nature of God, or God, his essence, God's essence. He says he is spirit. He is spirit. But then, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 15, he also said, this God who is spirit is also light. 1 John chapter 1, verse 15. He says, God is light. Now, by saying God is light, he's talking about his holy nature. His holy nature. So, in the Bible, light is a symbol of holiness as darkness is a symbol of sin. So when he says God is light, he's talking about the fact that God is holy. He is pure. He is pure in his nature. In him, there is no darkness. As a matter of fact, let's go there and read 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. I'm sorry. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. God is light. Then he explains, in him there is no darkness at all. In him there is no darkness at all. And he says, if we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not leave out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So here also we see that this God who has called us to himself and has given birth to us, he is spirit and he is also light. He is also light. Because God is light, God cannot sin. He is holy. He is holy. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Now, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. But when we go to Second Peter chapter 1, also verse 4, he will add more weight to it. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. He says, through this, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So when we come to Christ, he wants us to participate in his divine nature. So just as God is spirit, we must also be spirit beings and walk in in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Remember from last week's lessons in Galatians chapter 5. By the spirit, you not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. You see, God is spirit. And when we have been called by God, when we have been born by God, we become one in him, with him in his nature. So if God is spirit, then we also, we are born to become spirit beings. 
And we must walk and live our lives in the spirit. At the same time, God is light. God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. In him, there's no darkness at all. Darkness stands for sin and anything that is evil. So you, as a child of God, must live your life in the light so that in you, there will be no darkness at all. There will be no darkness at all. Then, here in our main Bible reading for today, that is 1 John chapter 4, reading from verse 7, the Bible says, God is love. God is love. Then it shows us how God demonstrates his love towards us. He says he sent his son Jesus to die for us who were sinners, deserving judgment. God has sent his son to die for us because of the fact that he is love. And he has demonstrated his love to us. Then he goes on to say that the demonstration of God's love, which has come to us by the sending of his son, has also changed us from being sinners into children of God. And as children of God, we, has, we have also become one with him in the same nature. In the same nature. So, it, it, it appears that anytime he reveals God's nature to us, then he says that we, by virtue of our new birth, must share the same nature, nature and then express it. Live in it. Live in it. Of course, we are talking about God's communicable attribute, his nature, his nature. So God is spirit. When we are born, we are also born of the spirit and we become spirit beings. So we should live by the spirit, walk by the spirit. God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. So if you have placed faith in Jesus, then in your life, there should be no darkness at all. You should live in light, in the light, in the light. As a matter of fact, we are the light of this world. We are the light of this world. But here, he says, God is love. And then he calls on us to exhibit this love of God. Because by placing faith in him, his nature, which is love, here in this passage, has also become our nature. So, we have to see this love in us. We have to see this love in us. Now, I am bringing these three expressions of God's nature as portrayed or revealed by John in his writing to our attention for a reason. For a reason. A reason. Now, the reason why I want us to understand this is the fact that the new birth that we have received, by which we say that we are children of God, has changed our nature into the very nature of God, or the very nature God. See, remember, God is spirit. And anyone who has been born of God, according to even Jesus in John chapter 3, verse 5 to 8, has also become a spirit being, a spirit being. So let's go there and then read John chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. The gospel according to St. John chapter 3, reading from verse 5 to 8. Jesus answered. Now, this is a discourse between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus had gone to Jesus. The Bible says he was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He was a Pharisee. He went to Jesus by night to ask an important question. Jesus answered and said, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound. But you cannot tell where it comes from. You cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. 
So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So you see, when we place faith in Jesus to be born again, we are born of the Spirit and we become spirit beings. That, according to John in his writing, is one of the nature or the essence of God. So to be born again also means that we are children of light. We are children of light. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. He says, You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. Now, this is who you are. I want you to embrace your new identity. Now, once you understand this, a call to live in life should not become a burden. A call to live in holiness should not become a burden. As a matter of fact, that is your very nature. That is your new identity. A call to live by the Spirit should not become a burden. Should not become a burden. Because that is who you are who you are. We must embrace our new identity in Christ Jesus. This glorious life can never be made possible not until we first appreciate and accept who we are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. So when you are born of God, God is spirit, you are born of the spirit, you are a spirit being. So if you are a spirit being, then you have to walk in the spirit. When you are born of God, God is light. And so you are children of light. So you should walk in the light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. So I should live my life to reflect the light that I have received, that I have become, that I have become. Now, the reason why I'm bringing all this also to our attention is to establish the understanding that now, as Christians, we cannot live in the old self. You see, God will not accept that. No. Because right from the Old Testament, God has given us hints that he accepts the new birth and not the old one. Right after the fall of man, God has been accepting the second birth and not the first one which comes by the flesh. And he's giving it, or he gave us a hint of it. Classical example is the life of Abraham. When you study into the life of Abraham, the Bible says Abraham had two sons. The first one born by Abraham was Ishmael. And according to scripture, he was born of the flesh by the slave woman. God rejected Ishmael and God accepted Isaac, the second birth or the second born. According to Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 to 23, maybe reading that would help us. Galatians chapter 4, verse 22 to 23. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman, and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born in the ordinary way, but his son by the free woman was born as the result of a promise. Praise the Lord. So you see, that is why God also rejected. When even Abraham presented Ishmael to God, God rejected Ishmael and said, no, 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 no. I want the one born of the promise. He's talking about the one born of the spirit. And that is Isaac. When we come to faith, we cannot present the one born of the flesh, the one born of the slave, unto God. We cannot live in the old nature. God will not accept it. God accepts the new one. Now, later, God will even choose Jacob who is the second born over Esau. As God was doing these things, he was pointing to the fact that in the New Testament, God is going to accept 
through Jesus Christ, the new creation. The new creation. You see, we are all born of the flesh. First, we are born of the flesh. But the second birth that we have received is by the spirit. And so God is not accepting anymore the first one. So a child of God must not live to gratify the desires of the flesh, the sinful nature. The sinful nature. By nature, we are born, we are children of Adam, the first Adam, the first birth that we received. That God has rejected it because that cannot please God. Now, we are children of the promise. Born of the spirit. By the second Adam. The man, Jesus Christ. You see, that is who you are. And this nature is the nature of God. Is the nature of God. The nature of God. So, if we go back to our key Bible passage, which is 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. I want us to pay attention to the reading. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And he says, Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. We have been born of God. We were born into this world by the sinful way or nature or by the flesh. By the flesh. And the flesh cannot please God. So God has given us a new birth by his spirit. And he says, one of the ways we show this is to live a life of love. Because the new birth was given to us by God's love. By God's love. God is love. And this is how God demonstrates his love. That he sent his son Jesus into the world to die for us. And through his death, or as a result of his death, we have been given a new birth into a living hope. Praise the Lord. And he says, anyone who has been born of God also knows God. So we have not only been born of God, but we also know God. And in the Bible, the word know has a much deeper meaning than simply intellectual and knowledge or acquaintance or intellectual understanding. No, it speaks of an experiential knowledge. Because we have been born of God, we know God. So it talks more about a deep relationship that we have with God. To share his life and enjoy his love. This knowing is not simply a matter of understanding fact. It is a matter of perceiving truth. Perceiving truth. So when we go to 1 John chapter 2, this time chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. This is how we know we are in him. So once we have been born of God, we are born also as children of obedience unto God. Because even the new birth that we have received came to us through the obedience of Jesus Christ, who was given to us as a demonstration of God's love. You see, the new birth we have received came to us through the absolute obedience of Jesus Christ, who was given to us as a demonstration of God's love. So God's love was manifested 
to us and Christ demonstrated it even through his obedience to the father as a result we have been born again and we have become one with him one with him and that is why he's linking love with obedience that's why he's linking love with obedience so in our key passage again first john 4 8 john says god is love then he challenges us to have the same nature as people who have been born of god and therefore share god's divine nature since god is love christians ought to love one another christians ought to love one another Amen. what is he saying you see what god is determines what we ought to be what god is or who god is determines what we ought to be as he is so are we in this world that is how verse 17 of first john chapter 4 reads he says if we love if we love then we would we will be complete or god's love is made complete amongst us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him we are like him so we are supposed to live our lives like christ in this world in this world oh hallelujah the fact that Christ, Christians love one another is evidence of their fellowship with God and their sonship from God. So two things. When we love one another, it becomes an evidence of our sonship from God and then our fellowship with God. Our sonship from God and our fellowship with God. And it is also evidence that we know God. We know God. This also shows the place of love in our lives as Christians. The place of love in our lives as Christians. Today, I want us to pray that we would walk in love. That the love of God will be made manifest in our lives. It's all about love. It's all about love. It's all about love. So when we go to the second passage, which is Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 following, 12 to 14, you see, Paul gives a hint about the power and strength of love in the lives of believers. Here he's listing the virtues that should characterize our love as Christians, which we have seen them as the fruit of the spirit. If you go to Galatians chapter 5. But let's listen to the apostle. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, he says, clothe yourselves. Make yourself beautiful. Decorate yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. That is interesting. But I want you to watch the next no, verse. Yes, the next verse, which is verse uh, 14. He says, over all these virtues, over all these virtues, put on love. And then he explains, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. This means there's no way we can successfully live the life of Christ if love is absent. It is love that unites all of these spiritual virtues so that 
there is a perfect beauty or there's perfect beauty and harmony which also indicates spiritual maturity so paul is suggesting here that love holds together in symmetry all part of christian character and gives value to all of them it gives value to all of them so living a life of love is very 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 paramount in our christian life he will even go on to say that without love all we do amount to nothing in first corinthians chapter 13 he teaches the same principle there apparently the people we're going to read the people in the church were measuring their importance of spirituality by several things like speaking in tongues relationships charismata generosity and even matayadom and in fact all these were very very important as they are today very 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 important but paul wants us to or the bible wants us to understand that as much as they are important if they are void of love if they are devoid of love they amount to nothing they amount to nothing even as in colossians chapter 3 says that verse 14 says that above all these virtues put on love which binds them all together now let's read from first corinthians chapter 13 and this time let's read first corinthians chapter 13 and then we'll read from verse 10 read from verse 10 but when perfection comes the imperfection disappears when i was a child i talked like a child as no first corinthians first corinthians chapter 13 Okay, let's read from verse 4. I'm sorry. Let's read from verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not proud. It does not, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in every in evil but rejoices with the truth it always protects always trusts always hopes always perseveres love never fails but where there are prophecies they will cease where there are tongues they will be still where there is knowledge it will pass away for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfection disappears. The imperfection disappears. So here, he also brings us to or brings to our mind or our attention what love does or is. Is he wants us to know the power of love in the life. Of the Christian in the, in the life of the Christian when you connect this to Col Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 where it says that as dearly beloved children of God now let us clothe ourselves with kindness humility gentleness and patience he says and above all this put on love which binds them together then in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 as we read he explains that the reason why I say this is that love has all these things has all these things so when you're going to live a life of compassion and it is not a life of love then he says 
what you consider to be compassion, what you consider to be kindness, is nothing. It's nothing because that is what love is all about. That is what love is all about. But before he would talk about it, he actually sounded a warning. And that is right from verse 1 of First Corinthians chapter 13. He says, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gang or a clanging symbol. Then he goes on to say, now, if I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries, and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. If I give all my, all I possess to the poor, and then surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. I gain nothing. So you see, love is very, 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 very important. Love is very, very, very important. Now, the reason why Paul or the Bible is teaching us the importance of love and the need for us to walk in love is that now, without love in our reading, everything, everything amounts to nothing. As a matter of fact, it is love that gives weight or value to our life and whatever we do. To whatever we do. Now, in, 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 in mathematics, there is simple calculation, which, which is very, very simple for everybody to understand. It's, it's for beginners. But it appears, it forms the, the basis for understanding even difficult things. That is when you are multiplying things by the number zero. And that is how in the beginning, in, when we were children, we were taught that any number multiplied by zero is zero. And this is the beginning. It forms the basis. So let us do some mathematics here. I want us to understand the place of love the importance of love, the, the weight that love places on our lives as Christians. So let's say one multiply by zero. One times zero is zero. So let's say that I have faith and my faith level is one and I have no love. The Bible says I am nothing. All right. What about if I increase in faith? And say my faith level is 10. All right. 10 times 0. Zero. It is still 0. All right. Then it appears that, well, I am not growing in faith. So let me, let me work very, very hard. And then grow in faith. Now I have grown in faith so much, that, so, much so that my faith level is even at 100. 100%. But let's say 100 times 0. Zero. Because here I don't have love. I have faith to move mountains. But I have no love. And the Bible is saying that if you have no love, you may have faith that is so big even to move mountains. But still, you are nothing. You are nothing. Okay, so I, 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 it's not enough. Okay, let me develop faith that is not even able to move only mountains, but I'm able to move mountains and the seas. So, I build my faith level to, let's say, a thousand. Mm. That when I speak, there is a performance. Mm. Not yet. Hallelujah. 
2000 mm. very big faith mm. the scripture is saying that even if i have that and i have no love mm. it is still nothing. nothing so love is very 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 important yes. amen. very 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 important amen if i speak in tongues of men and even of angels but do not have love so i'm able to speak in tongues of men and even in tongues of angels heavenly language tongues that men cannot speak i am so much gifted but i do them without love the bible says they are nothing they are nothing if i have gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have faith that can move mountains but do not have love Still, I am nothing. I am nothing. So, what actually should give our lives weight as Christians? Here in this Bible passage, in our studies this day, is love. The love of God. The love of God. So, if you want to actually know the value of your actions and your life, as a child of God, you should consider whether they are done in love or not. Whether they are done in love or not. Because I believe the final product of any action equals that action multiplied by the love of God that you have and you demonstrate. If you have zero love, then anything you do, no matter what it is, amount to zero. Amount to zero amount to zero and paul who wrote this was actually addressing a number of issues a number of issues in the church in corinth in the church in corinth and when you go all the way to chapter one of first corinthians first corinthians chapter one and i want us to read first corinthians chapter one we'll read from verse five or maybe verse 4. First Corinthians chapter 1. Let's observe something. He says, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. For in him you have been enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and with all kinds of knowledge. Now he's talking about church and he's thanking God. This church is not an empty church, per se. A church is, that is so full. It's not, and when it comes to spiritual giftings and other things, the church is heavily loaded. He says you are enriched in every way. In every way. With all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God, that's confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, what we see here is a church that has been graced by God and it was manifested by the gift of the spirit and paul mentions that they were enriched in speech i.e tongues and with all knowledge i want to believe the corinthian church was gifted with tongues and interpretation of tongues as speech has to do with outward expression and then he says you have been also enriched in knowledge and knowledge on the other hand had to do with inward understanding and this was part of God's testimony to the truth of the gospel which they believed. So when they believed the gospel, 
the gospel of their salvation, God testified about it with gifts, with gift. As he says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. As a matter of fact, when we come to faith, when we believe, you see, God has a way of giving a testimony of the gospel that brings us salvation. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 and 4. Very, very interesting. He says, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. All right. What about God? God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. According to his will. So God gives a testimony of the gospel that brings us salvation. And there are so many ways that God the Father gives testimony, authenticating the power of the gospel, the salvation that it brings to us. One of it is that he gives gifts of the spirit. And the church here in Corinth has received the gifts, giftings of the spirit as God's testimony, authenticating the power of the gospel. Now, instead of the church living their Christian life as God's new community of believers to witness for Christ and stand against the paganism at the time and the moral decadence that had infested the land, even as we see in our time today, or in our society today, by using their God-given resources, they were arguing about which gift is important. And then some of them were taking pride in having special ties to a particular Christian leader or man of God, such as Paul, Apollos, and even Peter. Some even claimed a special direct tie with Christ himself. And each group felt superior to others who did not have their special ties to their special people. And so when you go to verse 10, he says of the same 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. What binds all the virtues together? According to Colossians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, put on love, which binds all this together in perfect unity. It appears the church in Corinth lacks love the love of god and so though they were gifted there were divisions among them now our church as christians can be fully loaded with all the giftings of god but when we have no fruit we are not bearing the fruit of the spirit we will be divided there will be divisions amongst ourselves and there will be too much infighting what binds us together and brings a balance in our lives, individual lives, and as a community of God's people, is the love of God. The love of God. The love of God. My brothers and sisters, verse 11, some of from close household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas, which is Peter. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? So you see, the church has been saved. And God has given a testimony by the giving of gifts to the church. Yet, they were not growing in love. For which reason also, in spite of the many giftings 
that they had received. They were divided. And this division was a sign of immaturity. Immaturity. You see, what God expects of us, apart from everything else, is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. So when you come to chapter 12, Paul would deal with this issue. Would deal with this issue, which also led to chapter 13. So let's go there, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He says, now, about the, spirit, get the gift of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. Or no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit, yes. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. For the common good. To one that is given through the Spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit to another gift of healing by that one spirit to another miraculous powers to another prophecy to another distinguishing between spirit and to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues he will go on to talk about he says all these words are from the same lord the same are from the same the same spirit and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now, for time's sake, when you come to the tail end of that chapter, maybe from verse 27. Let's read from verse 27. Now, you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophet, third teachers, and then workers of miracles. Also, those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those who with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. And now I will show you the most excellent way. Now I will show you the most excellent way. So you see, God has graced the church with different gifts for the common good of the church. Now, what would cause us to operate even within the church and outside the church community in a way that will glorify God and impact lives with all our giftings and with all our talent, with all the resources, is love. Love must be the circulatory system, the life that should run through everybody to bring cohesion when there's no love. We disintegrate. There's fragmentation. There's infighting. Because we will lose the purpose when there is no love. So he says that, I want to show you. Now, you, you, you are fighting over these things. You should understand that God has given to each one of us as he wills for the common good. But let me show you the most excellent way. The most excellent way. And this is where 
we go to chapter 13. Now, you are speaking, you are fighting about tongues. You are fighting about prophecies. You are fighting about having mysteries or be, having the ability to speak mysteries and having knowledge, even having faith to move mountains. You are fighting about superiority because of generosity. He says, let me show you the most excellent way. Because all these things, they are very, very good. But he says, if I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gang or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. That is very, very, very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Especially verse 3 because we have already explained 1 and 2. But verse 3, verse 3, if I give all my poss possessions, all, all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast. Wow. Giving over your body to the flames. Giving all you possess to the poor. And even surrender your body to the flames. Are these things not good? Very, very, very good. Very, very good. I mean, giving your things to the poor, helping the needy, they are very, very, very good. But he says that, check the motive. If you want to do that, check the motive. If you, you, you're supposed to do good. You're supposed to help the poor. That is the Christian life. But you have to do it in love. Because he says that, if you do these things and they are without love, then you are only doing them to boast. To boast. So what is the motive behind our actions? Generous giving and heroic self-sacrifice are great things. But if they are not motivated by the love that comes from God, then even these great things amount to zero. The life that pleases God is one that comes from a pure heart of love. Amen. Here also we see that even self-sacrifice with that love is self-centered. Self-sacrifice without love is self-centered. And self-centeredness is not the spirit of Christ. Christ is selfless. And his love. Again, let us hear Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 2 to 5. Very, very interesting. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 2 and to 5. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the street to be honored by men. So he's not, just, he's not necessarily condemning good deeds, but he's talking about the spirit that drives it. The spirit that drives it. You see, the Bible says love is not self-seeking. But if there is no love, then even in your good deeds, you are drawing attention only to yourself. So, the reason why you are doing that is not to help the person who is in need, but using the person who is in need to promote yourself. And that is not love. That is why love is very, very, very important. Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 2. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues. So the hypocrites, I mean the, the Pharisees were in the synagogues. And in order to show that they are pious, they would look for an occasion where everybody would see what they are doing. And then they would do good to the poor. Only drawing attention to themselves. 
God condemns this spirit of self-centeredness and encourages this selfless spirit, which is the spirit of love, the spirit of love. Doing things only to draw attention to self is not sincere love. Sincere love is selfless and it is not boastful. I would want to end the message here to continue another time next week. But no wonder Jesus also says that the whole law, you see, the whole law is summed up in this. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And then love your neighbor as yourself. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40. Now, it is very, very, very important that as children of God, we walk in the love of God. We walk in the love of God. Love is the factor that multiplies everything else. If love is present, you see, it dramatically multiplies the value of everything else. If the love factor is zero, it reduces everything else to zero. The fact is, when we clothe ourselves with God's love, there will be glory in the church. See, otherwise we may, we may be doing so much, but there will be no glory. There will be no glory. No, the, the church will not have weight. No. The fact that we are busy doing things does not necessarily mean that we are a glorious church. No. The spirit that drives our action for them to become glorious here in our passage is the spirit of love. For which is reason also in our theme text, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21, where it says that there may be glory in the church. Paul was praying. And let's read his prayer. And I pray that this will be our prayer today. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. We will read this and then we will pray. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Now, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. I pray that we would have this understanding that we'll be deeply rooted in this love and then also know how wide how high how deep this love is now let's go on then he says and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god so when we know when we know this love that surpasses all knowledge we will be filled. It is knowing this love, not intellectually, but experiencing this love and living in this love, walking in this love, then we will be filled yes. to the measure. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's go there and read again. Please put it on the screen for me. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That you may be filled. I pray, I pray that we will know this love, the love of God yes. that surpasses knowledge. Yes. And that is why I pray that we will be filled with the Spirit. Yes. 
and walk in the spirit and be led by the spirit because this love we're talking about surpasses knowledge yes. we need to be enabled by the spirit of god we need to be enabled by the spirit of god so that christ may dwell in your heart through faith and i pray that being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god it says now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us again talking about his holy spirit that works within us you see god is able to do this yes. god is this is not difficult when we yield to him god is able to do this he's able to do beyond our understanding and he does it through his power that is within us and that is why galatians chapter 5 says live by the spirit and you'll not gratify the desires of the sinful nature To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, we have been called by God. We have been born of God. God is light. We are children of light. God is spirit. We are children of spirit and we are spirit being. But God is is love and so we must also be children of love let us live the life of our father the love the life of love the life of love when we yield to the holy spirit god is able to work within us he's able to do more abundantly than what we can imagine by the power that is within us Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moment and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. I want you to ask yourself, do you love? What kind of love is it? Is it the love of God? If you love with the love of God, then it means you are in God and God is in you. And then all that you will do, you will do it in love in this way. You will carry weight because love will add value to every action of yours. And then you would have confidence in the day of judgment because in this world, now, you are living your life as Christ. May the Lord bless us even as we enter into a time of prayer. Shall we lift our voices and begin to pray? Shall we lift a prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to honor you, we want to bless you. We thank you so much for this gift of love that you've given us. We thank you, which has also given us a new birth. And we have become partakers of your divine nature. And it is expected of us to walk in this new nature. Today, we have understood that our nature is not of the flesh. Our nature is of the spirit. Our nature is not of the darkness. Our nature is of the light. Our nature is not of hate. Our nature is of love. Because that is who you are. And you are able to work in us. To bring your nature to bear. By the power that is within us. Our duty is to yield to the Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus. That spirit divine take full control i surrender unto you that i may know your way and do what you do in the name of jesus i pray in the name of jesus i pray in the name of jesus i pray in the name of jesus that my whole nature will be refined oh day by day dear lord all these three things i pray to seek thee more dearly 
or nearly love thee more dearly follow thee more closely oh i pray i pray in this way i will live just as you are the world will know you through my everyday life yes i will be a light to this world that through me your name will be glorified and uh, the church will be a glorious church in the name of Jesus that there will be weight in all my actions of God that it will place value in all I do in the name of Jesus I pray I pray take my life take my life take my life come on continue to lift up prayer continue to lift prayer continue to lift prayer continue to lift prayer Erambro sudi binda na ba shoto bai kabo siti brian na na ba na na ba kanda bo shatai zerebe kete brian na luba kuaswai inda lo bo shara ma mala bandare kasuta babu brian na na ba kuaswata ba na na bo sudi brian dai inda na ba shana ma na na ba na na ba kuaswata ba sudi bi ijenda bo rabaka sata ba insa na ba tete bi inda na ba kata bro sudi bi inda na ba kuaswata. Jende bebe ra saraba doro ba kwaswata bai ila la 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 basuta bai nyame ne dono di ala sese odo odo yi apara. son Jesus to die for us this is how God demonstrates his love that even when we were yet sinners Christ died and died for us this is how we know God is love not that we love him but he first loved us and this is how we demonstrate love not because people must do something in return not because we gain anything from the people who are the receiving end of our actions, but that we love them unconditionally. We love them. This is a, a strong benevolent concern for the well-being of another without expecting anything in return. This is the love of God. And this is how God demonstrated his love. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? That we'll be able to live in this kind of love express God in our everyday life by loving one another by loving one another love will remove all divisions all dissensions all factions all quarrels Abrosi ni brianda na busha na bakasa na bata na basha na basuti ida na busha na bakata brianda na bakata ina na ba ida na basha na ba let there be love shared amongst us. Let there be love in our hearts. Oh, may now your love shield this nation.
give us fresh understanding of brotherly love that is real. You see, brotherly love that is real. So, love sometimes can be fake, can be hypocritical, but the love of God is real. It's real because God in Himself, He is light in Him. There is no variation in Him, there is no darkness. And so, His love comes through his light there is no fickleness in him there is no variation in him everything is clear everything about him is pure everything about him is holy so is his love we have to express the same love love that has nothing behind it love that is real love that is real love that is genuine how have you been living your life all these years as a child of God? What drives your actions? What is the motive for the things that you do? The glorious life in Christ Jesus is driven by love. Even when you are rebuking, you rebuke in love. When God chastises his people, he chastises them. Because he loves them. It's all about love. Love is the greatest. Let there be love shared. Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. Brothers and sisters everywhere listening to me. God's love is manifested to us in this way that he sent his son Jesus to die. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loves the world and he has given his only begotten son. Now your responsibility is to believe in him, to accept him. And if you do that, you will not perish. But what will follow is everlasting life. Today, I present Jesus to you as a demonstration of God's love. You say, God loves me. Yes. But how do you know God loves you? Do you have Jesus in your life? The demonstration of God's love is by the gift of his son Jesus. And what Jesus brings to us is eternal life through a new birth. But you must place faith in him. So wherever you are, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to encourage you. All you have to do is to know that Jesus is the Son of God. And because of our sins, Jesus came to die. And he rose again. We have to place faith in him. In this way, we are saved. We will receive eternal life. If you want to accept Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Wherever you are, say, Dear Lord, I know I am a sinner. Because of my sins, Christ Jesus came and died. He rose again for my justification. Today, I accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. I will serve him.
for the rest of my life. Amen. And see, if you prayed this prayer today, God's love has been poured into your heart by his spirit. Now, you have received a new birth. The old nature has no more dominion over you. God has accepted you as his son because of this new birth. I want to encourage you, find yourself a Bible-believing church and fellowship with them. If you are around, I also enjoin you to come. Let us worship the Lord together until church reopens for face-to-face -face meeting. You can tune in every Sunday, 10 a.m. Central Time. And let's worship the Lord together. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Go and love one another. In this way, you will be in God and God will be in you until we meet again next week. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Amen.